So um, a couple of questions. Obviously, you didn't. You, you came to work not as a main event fighter. Mm -hmm. uh, you were elevated to a main event fighter. What went through your mind? When were you told? And what did you feel? Um, it's crazy because usually I'll be like, oh my god, main event. So I always in my head, you know. I grew up in the UFC because <clears throat> there's not really much competition mm -hmm. in the local circuit. So we took the opportunity. UFC provided it. We went for it, but I wasn't ready. Yeah. I wasn't ready. It's just different here. These guys are tough. I wish I would have faced the guys I faced earlier in my career in UFC. I wish I would have faced them on the local circuit. Okay, then right. I think I'll be prepared. But it is what it is. <clears throat> God gave me this moment. I went for it. So the whole time I was like, okay, that's cool. That's just more exposure. So mm -hmm. just go out there, implement my game, my game plan, and execute it properly. Yeah, you absolutely rose to the occasion. I am curious. <coughs> we know that your coach can get uh, kind yeah. of mouthy in between I rounds. Know. What what was said to you between round one and round two? Because um, obviously you came out very motivated for the second round. Yeah, we know <coughs> he's a Samuel, he's a wrestler. So eventually he's going to try to initiate the takedown. So our game plan was not, he struggles with Southpaw. Southpaw, so establish the job, utilize the range. Don't get, don't put my back against the cage and don't step back, don't go back in a straight line because he's going to try to initiate. So if he's not getting the best of you in the, in the striking, he's going to want to go for takedown. So our game plan was to keep him on, on distance. <laughs> Unfortunately, I didn't do that in the first round. So he got me down, um, stay calm work on the basics, get out of trouble, work our way back to the feet, and um, just work from there. You know, establish distance and just impl implement my range. And um, I try to use the jab more, you know. I, I wasn't, I'm not, I'm not really a jabber like that, yeah. but eventually on the, <clears throat> in the drawing board back in the gym, I work on all these all these um skills that I haven't built up yet, you know. So I established my jab more. I think I did better this time than before, but that's what that was the game plan. Yeah. He clearly came out with a game plan to yes. just put you on the back foot yes, immediately. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you guys had a little bit of grappling, got put on the fence for a bit. Was that the first round that you expected from Iwan? Because we all know he's such a fast starter. Yeah, I expected the pressure. I expected, but I know the, he can't keep that pace over five rounds. Uh, we tried to tell him make the pull five, but he wasn't put in five rounds. But we know my best chance was to wear him out. But I'm not trying to sit there and wait. Just I have to put pressure. I can't just wait and just stare at him. Just put pressure in him. Fortunately, sometimes you get caught. Yeah. So. Yeah. Were the knees specifically <coughs> something that you guys game planned for, or was it yes. something that Safe called for in between yes. round one and two? Because mm -hmm. yeah. we know he's going to struggle on the feet, so we didn't want to do it in the first round, <coughs> so he won't initiate his takedowns. We just wanted to wait in the second round because I could hear him gasping. As I'm staring at his corner, I could see him breathing hard, so I just knew I had to use the knees that time because he's going to get desperate for the takedowns because he, I mean, he was successful in the first, so why wouldn't he go back to it again? So time it. We call it Texas. Go after it. He's gonna, his head is going to be there every single time if I step off the center line because with <clears throat> mirror stances, I'm Southpaw Orthodox, so step off, throw that. Is there, is there a stress that comes <clears throat> with getting ready for, like, going through a training camp with a guy like Kuti Lava? He's super unpredictable. You really don't know what he's going to do all the time. Is there a stress that comes with that? <laughs> to be honest, there wasn't no stress. You know, I like the guys that were want to throw down because I always do better against those guys than the guys that are more technical. So the guys I want to throw heavy shots, I actually do better with them. So uh, we know he's, he's <clears throat> he comes out crazy and comes out with a super, super huge burst of energy. But mm -hmm. just so <clears throat> eventually that adrenaline is going to dump and we're going to take over. Um, so, so as you you know you look at the the rankings, obviously you want to work your way there. But yes, you've been very honest about growing along the yes. way and not rushing it. So Absolutely. I'm always curious, like when you're thinking about like who's the next person, is it more a style or is it a name that's important or is it a date? Like um, which which one's more important the, to you? Despite the opponents, I feel like we break it down properly. Me and my coach, we watch tape over and over again. I like to watch tape. So you know, this, despite the whether it's southpaw, orthodox, aggressive, not aggressive, technical, not, we're gonna break it down and find the little tendencies and their their strengths and their weaknesses, and we're gonna try to capitalize on the weaknesses. I remember, you know, when you won on the contender series <clears throat> and that that interview and that moment. Do you is this the the career that you envisioned? You know, when you got that, when you got the contract initially? I knew I had, like, physically I was blessed, but mm -hmm. um, mentally in that skill, I haven't been doing it for too long, so I know I needed, I'm more of a slow learner, so I needed more time. So I knew that eventually I'm going to have to, like, catch up. Because <clears throat> it can drown here, I don't want to drown, so i got to catch up. So I know, <coughs> sorry, I know I don't have those skill set, so I had to work twice as hard, you know. I had to work seven days a week. And um, eventually I did, and I'm growing. Mm -hmm. As you said, I'm growing in the UFC, and I'm, it's a pleasure to fight for the UFC. So I feel happy. I'm not satisfied for where I'm at. I want to get up there to where the guys like Anthony Smith is. Mm -hmm. I mean, these guys been putting time. You know, you don't just you don't you don't just get it given to you. Mm -hmm. They put in time, and it's been years and years. So 
you watch those guys like, wow, these guys put in a lot of time. So you got to do the same, put a lot of time and gain that, accumulate those knowledge and get to display it. So were you able to call your mom though and let her know that you were the main yeah, event tonight? Yeah, she's, um, it's, it's crazy because she, she, so she has ALS. Yes. So she, it's crazy because she can't, um, she can't really hear. She's going in and out of her consciousness. Yeah. So sometimes she's not really there. She's seeing you, but she's not really there. So her spirit, she could feel me, but um, sometimes I get really emotional because my mom was like, she's my rock. <clears throat> if, if it wasn't because of her, I wouldn't be in America. Mm. So she did everything possible. I was a troublesome kid growing up. I was just mischievous, you know. Yeah. But um, she just knew that <clears throat> I could do it, and uh, she believed in me. And so, even when my dad bailed on her due to her illness, she stayed there. So I love my mom. Yeah, it shows. It really does show, and we all feel that, and we can tell that that's a big part of your fighting spirit. Um, you know, I love my mom too. A lot of us are mo our mama's boys and girls uh -huh. here, and. Um, it's a very noble thing that you do, and we can see it. We appreciate it. And just keep winning. You're doing great. Do you have a name in mind for your next fight? Man, I'm just ready for the opponent. Yeah. Whoever they say ready at that time, give it to me. So I could just take you to the lab and do just break him down and try to find out what he's good and what he's not good at. The tendencies, yeah. the strategic plan that's going to be surround that game, that fight, and mm -hmm. I'm ready to go. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.